Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 20 career mode here for our second season in MotoGP. Now for this episode if we have a look at the Moto3 Junior team I've actually fixed the problems that we had last time with the names and things like that. And I didn't actually realise you could compare the riders like this. So our second rider actually has good wet weather riding and is a pole position genius apparently because I didn't, I didn't really look at his stats in depth I just saw he was better than the others that were available so I just went for him. So I'm going to have a look at the development then. So we actually haven't got research points in this team. So I don't know how you're actually supposed to get those. Perhaps they don't get them until the weekend. We'll have a look at team development then. So some of them still need to unlock. Some of them we can get right away. So we can get this one apparently right away. So it's develop and install. Oh, because that's for bike development, I guess. So if we look at R&D then. Engine update course. We may as well make the bike as good as we can. So we'll spend 75k on this. So that'll take four weeks then to do, I think. Yeah, we can't do anything else. Can we do anything on here? The travel costs are reduced. Minus 30%. Yeah, we'll do this as well to try and save some cash. And then on here... I'll leave this for now because we haven't seen how they actually have performed in a race yet. So then we'll just keep advancing forward to the Qatar Grand Prix now, I think. I don't think there's really anything else we can do. One week left on our frame upgrade, actually. And there we go. Our frame's now fully upgraded. Well, not fully upgraded, but the upgrade is finished. So if we have a look at the research data not enough to upgrade that not enough to upgrade the aerodynamics engine we can't upgrade any more of that yet electronics we can upgrade this engine braking I just think I will do but I think I'll only put the electronics guys on that everybody else I'll put on the research data for everything else so I've organized all of the research so we should be getting some more research points now so if we have a look at the technical staff we've got a new data analyst applying again so a better electronics person, worse, a lot worse on the engine, so we're going to refuse that. And this person's really bad on the engine as well. They're not too bad on the frame, to be fair to them, but yeah, we'll keep the guys we've got for now. So we've got a notification for team planning for next year then, apparently. Ah, so a new team manager trying to apply for my Moto3 team. we an A+, plus. that's pretty good, but we've already got an A+, plus, so I think I will leave that for now. So we'll keep advancing forward. So then, we've got absolutely nothing to do except head into Qatar now then. I'm not sure how the weekend's actually going to go. So now that you've set up your junior team, you can follow your riders during their races in real time. Select the racing sessions of your junior team and decide whether you want to follow the races or just look at the results at the end of the weekend. So then we can actually do the race. Well, we could, we could watch the race live or we could just see the, the results of it after we've done our race. Now, I do like the idea of following the race, but it's just a little bit awkward. Sort of straight after our qualifying and then I have to watch a race. And then, then I actually get to race myself, so I've just had a break for a bit. Which I suppose, you know, it's realistic to real life, but usually you go straight from qualifying into the race. Quite well, we've got all these free practice sessions on, I don't know, so I'm just turning those off. I'm going to keep doing what I did last year, just get the research data by just researching things, basically, uh, throughout the season. Instead of doing the free practice sessions, because you can actually still get quite a lot of research data just from the research anyway. So I head straight into qualifying one now then, and hopefully this Suzuki is good around this circuit. So then, here we are in Qatar for qualifying one. Let's see who's in this session with us then. So Brad Binder, Franco Morbidelli, Danilo Petrucci, Takaki Nakagami, Cal Crutchlow, Francesco Bagnaia, Ika Lacuona, Alicia Spagro, Jorge Martin, Joan Zarco, Tito Rabat, Alex Marquez, and then obviously myself. It's a little bit weird there to not see Brad Binder go through. Obviously his teammate Oliveira has gone through into Q2. But we'll head straight out onto the track then and hopefully the Suzuki does work here but I actually have no idea how it's going to feel. So coming into the last corner then, obviously it's going to be a little bit better than it was in pre-season testing because we have now got a couple of upgrades, well we've got one upgrade on it on the frame. But as we come up towards the line then, hopefully we can get into qualifying too. We managed it last year on the KTM so if we don't manage it this year on the Suzuki that will be very very disappointing. In fact, we actually had a very good debut here on the KTM. I do think they modified the AI, though. Milestone did. Oh, the anti-wheelie not really saving us there on the exit of that corner. So definitely probably should look at some anti-wheelie upgrades after we've done that engine braking upgrade on the electronics. Through turn three, then. Down the straight, hitting the brakes. So we've done one-tenth underneath the time currently in this first sector. Sliding the rear through. Oh, through turn five. We didn't quite like that, did it? did snap a little bit but yeah we had a very very good debut here in MotoGP last season on the KTM I actually got fifth position 
which was better than we did later on in the season at a few races. Qatar, I thought, was going to be a track that AI would absolutely dominate at as well, which didn't seem to be the case. It definitely, there was, we were on for a third position at one point, but we had some contact with Fabio Quattararo, and that really affected me, but we're about a tenth away now then, from the fastest time in the second sector. So not quite having the pace, but I did make that little bit, little bit of a mistake through turn five, didn't I? Hopefully I could try and pull it back in the rest of the lap. The AI aren't too good through this next sector, if I recall correctly, from doing different things at Qatar. The historic challenges, obviously career mode as well. Maybe even a couple of one-off races. So I'm 83,000 underneath now, so I've pulled back nearly two tenths. No, not nearly two tenths in that sector. Pulled back a little bit of time, nearly, a, well, probably about a tenth of a second. So through turn 15 then, bit of a wheelie again as we come down towards the last corner, you can see the fuel is being consumed a lot, we've got 1.4 laps of fuel left, which will be enough to go for one more lap, out of the last corner then, coming up towards the line, is this going to be good enough to go top of this session, obviously it's going to be a bit harder to go through this year because the field is a bit closer, 1 minute 53.0, that's not actually a very fast lap, but we'll see what I can do on the second lap. As we come up towards the line, then Marquez actually just takes the top of the session with a 52.7. We go 52.9, so that's not quite enough, so we're going to have to head back to the pits then and go out for a second run. So Alex Marquez actually doing pretty well on that LCR Honda, to be honest. I expected him to do a little bit worse this season on that, since he wasn't too stellar on the Repsol Honda. He had a couple of good results, to be fair to him, but he wasn't that great. Oh, Bang Nye's going into the pits. I was getting ready to get a slipstream off him up towards the line, but he went into the pits. That's a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully we'll still beat Marquez this time anyway. Coming up towards the line. Yes, we do. Over half a second quicker. 52-1. That's more like it. So hopefully that'll be good enough to go through at the end of this session then. So then, it was good enough for us to go through. I went through ahead of Alex Marquez then. Brad Binder failing to get through. That KTM has made some serious strides this year, so we will be disappointed to have missed out then on that Q2 spot. More Bedelli down in 14th on the grid. Now, he's got to be disappointed with that because, really, he should have definitely been in Q2 already with the other Yamahas. I'm surprised Valentino Rossi wasn't actually in Q1, to be honest, but uh, he was in Q2, so that was quite good. Laquona and Petrucci not quite living up to the expectations that I left behind me at the Tech 3 team, but they were very, very close in time. So perhaps that Tech 3 bike doesn't quite have the pace of the factory bike this season. They are quite close to each other, obviously, in terms of time, like I said. Bang Naya, it's actually a very close grid if you look. 1.0 for three people. So just a few hundreds separating them. And then Crutchlow's only still a few hundreds further back. Same with Nakagami and Rabat and even Alasius Bagra to a certain extent. Jorge Martin in his rookie race there in 12th in this session, 1.4 seconds off. And Zarco rounding off the back of the grid. So, not a great start to the season for Zarco. But let's head into qualifying two now and let's see what we can try and get. So here we are then in qualifying two. The first time we're really going to see the people that we will be battling with this season. See how their performance stacks up against my own and against each other really. I don't know actually how they are going to stack up. Obviously a lot of riders changing teams. They might gel well with their bikes. They might not. Obviously Polis Bagro, we never really battled with him last year. But he will be at the front this time on the Repsol Honda. So... It will be interesting to see how this works. So we'll head out onto the track then, and we need to try and get a good position for this first race for my championship defence. So coming up towards the line then to start our first run in qualifying two. Coming up towards the line then. What's it going to be this lap time? Will it be a low 52? 52.4, so just top of the session for now, but I'm guessing that will be beaten later on. Yeah, we're a second off at the end of that lap, so it was not actually a very good lap. I didn't think I rode too badly, but yeah, it just wasn't quick enough. So we'll have to head back to the pits now and get some more fuel and probably some new tyres. Coming up towards the line then, at the end of this lap, is it going to be good enough to go top? Not quite a tenth away, so that first time was actually very, very good. I can't beat it. So coming up towards the line then, what's this time going to be? 1 minute 52.2, so we have just improved it there with 25 seconds left in the session. I think the 20, uh, the 52.4 would have been good enough anyway, but that is the end of qualifying then. Let's see how it's stacked up. Wow, I was not expecting this. This is a crazy grid. This just shows how competitive the field is this year and how close it all will be in this career mode. Except Alex Marquez apparently at the bottom there. But Paul Spagro second place then three tenths down on me. Maverick Vinales in third. Jack Miller fourth. Alex Rins fifth. Mir in 6th place, Valentino Rossi getting 7th position, 
eighth for Marquez. Marquez down in eighth position. Fabio Quattararo, who'd probably be another favourite for fighting for the championship this season, is in ninth place. Tenth place then for Andrea De Vizioso. Eleventh for Miguel Oliveira, and twelfth, obviously, there for Alex Marquez. Must have something must have happened to. Marquez because he went quicker in Q1 than that I'm pretty sure by a good way I think he went about second faster in Q1 than he did just then so quite what that's all about so I think the next thing to do now is to go and see our Moto3 race be interesting to see how that pans out then for our riders let's see where our riders started then so Daisy Dixon in 22nd and Manuel Hernandez in 12th place so that's actually a little bit better than I was expecting from our riders then so I'm not sure what's what we sort of have to do if we get to control them or anything. I don't think we get any input. I think we just have to watch. So then, one of our riders started in 12th place. This will be quite interesting to watch. So let's follow this race. So it's McPhee on pole. Arbelino second. Antonelli third then. Not sure where Arenas is. Arenas still seems to be pretty bad in this category for some reason. Yeah, 13th place. Perhaps that's something I'll have to mess with as well. I need to try and make the Moto3 performance probably a little bit more realistic. Because it doesn't seem very realistic right now. So here we are then. We're on board with... Daisy Jackson. Let's try and get across to the TV camera. There we go. So she's actually had a very, very good start. Where's our other rider gone to? Manuel Hernandez. Hernandez up to 10th place. Yama Masia currently leading the race. So that's not a surprise there, is it? If we remember back to our old Moto3 season. So Hernandez up into 10th place. Then you can see Daisy Dixon in the background trying to make some moves on the inside. And to be honest, Dixon was supposed to be the better rider, so I'm quite surprised that Hernandez has started this season so well. But he's up the inside of Gabriel Rodrigo, up into 10th position once again then. Let's see what he can do from here. So it is only a five-lap race, although that is quite long at Qatar. He's dropped out to 13th now. He's a little bit timid on the brakes. So he's clipped a Red Bull KTM. And here comes his teammate, actually, Daisy Jackson, coming through behind. She's up to 18th place now, so despite her not, not qualifying as well, she's had a pretty decent start. He, she's got at the inside of one of the KTM Tech, not Tech 3, one of the Red Bull IO KTMs. And it looks like Hernandez has dropped back through the order a little bit here. So let's swap over to Hernandez. They're almost side by side on track now. So Hernandez, after a great qualifying, has dropped down into 16th place. But he's trying to get back up the inside of Darren Binder by the looks of it. That is a that is a dangerous thing to do there. But there we go. Our two bikes now side by side. So Daisy Dixon looking for a move around the outside of Manuel Hernandez. There she goes up the inside of the left-hander. Albert Arenas behind the pair of them. So streaming through this section then of the track. So it's, it seems like it is the spectator mode from online, but you get it in light. Stop looking behind you, Daisy. Keep looking ahead. She's looking for a move on Darren Midden. Now let's have a look at her now that she is the lead rider. Can she try and get some points in this race? Our objective is to get into the top 15. So if she can get past one more rider, she'll be there. She'll be on her, on her way. So here we go then. Darren Binder looking at the side of Iagora ahead of her. Can she try to capitalise on that? She's got a pretty good run. Darren Binder doesn't look like he's got a, such a good run. But Yama Masi is clearing off already. John McPhee seems to be struggling a little bit in the pack there. And she's going round the outside of Darren Binder. Beautiful move from Daisy Jackson there. She's going round the outside of Iagora as well. Go on, Daisy. Go on. Side by side with Iagora on the straight. Get a little bit of slipstream ahead from Philip Salach, I believe that is, in front of her. So Masi still leads. Antonelli second then. Fanati in third. Mino fourth. Fifth then for Suzuki, sixth for Arbolina, seventh for Vietti, Foggia, eighth, Lopez, ninth, and McPhee ran up the top ten. But whilst I was saying that, she's got past Ayagora then, and Philip Salach is her next target. And there goes Hernandez in the background, going on the outside of Darren Binder as well. So let's have a look at him for a second. He's got past Darren Binder up into 16th once again now. So is he going to set his sights on Ayagora? He obviously got a little bit flustered at the start, but he seems to be getting his momentum back now. It's nice to see that both of our riders are quite close on track as well. It's quite easy to keep an eye on both of them. So we'll have to keep our eye on the back of the picture there with Ayagora and see if he gets past him. But Ayagora is closing up to Daisy Jackson a little bit again. But obviously we do only need the top 15, but any points are good. Any points are good, so if we can try and get above 15th place, that would be even better. But of course, I would be, I'd would be i be happy even if they just finish outside of the range because so far my riders are doing pretty well. I'm quite impressed with a pair of them on their, obviously, debuts in Moto3. So Hernandez still being a bit hounded by Darren Binder there. He hasn't quite been able to catch up to Ayagora yet and make any kind of moves on him. So into the final corner then for Daisy Jackson. Can she try and get some such stream off Salach on this straight? Maybe try and make a move. Looks like the leaders are starting to get away now. The two 658 bikes both in that front pack. But looks at it. So Messiah still leads ahead of Antonelli Fanati. That's the top three there. 
Daisy Jackson is getting away a little bit from Ayagora now, and I think Hernandez is actually making a move on Ayagora on the breaks into the first corner. Is he going to be able to pull it off? Not quite. He wasn't really that close, actually. It looked... It was a little bit of a deceiving camera angle, but Antonelli just set the fastest lap on the previous lap, so he'll definitely be trying to catch up to Messia, who is still leading the Grand Prix at the minute. Oh, here comes Daisy. She's really closing on Salach now. Perhaps the tyre wear will start to kick in for some of the riders ahead of her, and she can try and make some positions up. She looks quite stable right now. She doesn't look like she's overly pushing too much. Same with Hernandez. Obviously, he is just outside the points, but he's not doing a bad job. Fodger was going for a dive bomb ahead there. Oh, Salach has got a little bit wide. He's looking for a move on Rodrigo ahead. That might actually affect them a little bit. Yes, they go side by side through the triple rights. That's allowing Jackson to catch up. Can Jackson have a look on Salach? Not quite. But Salach still trying to hang it around the outside of Rodrigo. Side by side for the pair of them. As they go into the penultimate turn. Salach up the inside. Oh, Agora's looking at the inside of Jackson as well. Jackson trying to carry the speed through. She's getting a run on both of them. They're going four wide down towards the last quarter. Because Agora's getting a good run. And she goes up the inside of Rodrigo. She pulls off the move. Well, actually, she did for a second. It said she was up to 13. She was back down to 14. She's back up to 13th again now. You can't really tell on the straight because they're side by side. But where is she going to come out? She's ahead of Rodrigo now. And there goes, there goes Hernandez as well looking for him. He's just past Rodrigo and Agora at the same time. There's so both bikes now up into the points. If we look at Hernandez then. And there goes Jackson trying to look up the inside of Salah. Still can't quite do it. But they're now running 13th to 14th. Because really, Rodrigo, Rodrigo's definitely got some sort of tyre problems. He's struggling massively now. Gabriel Rodrigo. And Ayagora is trying to find a way past Hernandez there then. Ayagora around the outside. Hernandez still in front of Agora. And I think Jax is going for a move on Salach. Not quite. Once again, a little bit deceiving. Now my two riders are going to be battling on track. Oh, Hernandez trying to go around the outside of Daisy Jackson. Please don't crash into each other, guys. Please don't crash into each other. But I think Hernandez might have pulled that one off. He's got a really good run down towards turn six. And there he goes up the inside. So Hernandez now up into 13th position in this race. And he's the one trying to attack Salach once again. Looks like McPhee and I think that might be Ralph Hernandez have got ahead of these guys. So I don't think we'll be catching them up anytime soon. But Hernandez is really, really looking like he wants to pass Salach in this race, which I really, really hope he can do. Try and get a 12th place. And if he can try and help his teammate get through as well, a 12-13 finish would be fantastic in our first race, managing DHL Honda with two rookies as well. Here goes Hernandez around the outside. Oh, he's looking behind him in the triple rights. That's a dangerous thing to do. But he's still looking around the outside of Philip Salach. Can he pull it off? Oh, and here comes, here comes Daisy now trying to get up the inside as well. Please don't crash into each other. Please don't, because that would be horrible for the team in the first race. But Hernandez trying to close up to the back of Salach. Then can he do anything as they go towards the final quarter to start the final lap? It actually looks like they got away from Agora a little bit behind, but Agora will probably ca capitalise on the slipstream. And um, hopefully my two riders can tow each other along and both get past Salach here. Here comes Hernandez trying to pull alongside Salach on this straight. Daisy Jackson in the slipstream as well. We've got past Salach so up into 12th. And now there goes Daisy as well. Daisy trying to get past Salach as well down towards the first corner. Can she pull it off on the inside of Salach? Yes, she can. So up into 13th. Oh, no. Salach is around the outside, though. She's not quite got it for now. Is Salach going to have a look up the inside? No, he's not. But she's still trying to hang around the outside. Jackson on the outside there. Up into 13th again momentarily. Back down to 14th once again. And to be honest... I'm quite impressed with Hernandez. He got flustered at the start, lost a few positions, but he's actually recovered back up to his bridge spot. So that's great. But Jackson as well has had a fantastic race. Round the outside, she goes off Salach. Can she pull it off? Round the outside of Philip Salach. Not quite been able to pull it off there. But she's still trying to hang in there. She's not quite done it yet. She's looking to the outside. Oh, Salach has moved her out a little bit. There goes Basher Binder up the inside. Well, he's not done a Basher move this time. But Binder up the inside then. So poor Jackson demoted into 15th place now for a little bit. Can she do anything, though? Up the inside of Binder she goes. All over the back of Darren Binder here. But no, it looks like she's actually now struggling a little bit. Looks like Hernandez has got it, but there, Arenas has gone past Jackson. Now, so Jackson, unfortunately, is really struggling. Yeah, look, she's sliding all over the place. And if we look back forward to Hernandez, Hernandez has got a pretty healthy lead. In fact, he was about to catch Toba. So it was actually Toba ahead, not Fernandez. I was a little bit wrong with that one. But unfortunately, Jackson has dropped down to 16th place. So the better rated rider actually struggling a little bit here in this race. She had 
the upper hand early on. Her tyres are actually still pretty good condition, so quite why she's dropping back all of a sudden, I don't know. If you look at the tyres on the right hand side, of course. But it looks like nothing else is going to happen. Iagora got bashed, uh, bashed about a little bit, didn't he? He lost quite a few places. So into the last quarter then for Manuel Fernandez. He's going to get us 12th place in this first race, which beats our objective. Unless he could try and drag Toba to the line, because his pace in the last couple of laps has been phenomenal. Daisy Jackson in the background there. Unfortunately going to get 16th place, but still a good ride from both of my riders there. So if we swap to Daisy Jackson to see her go over the line, a good performance of both riders there. So then, Nicolo Antonelli actually won the race. I didn't actually notice him get ahead of Messia, obviously because I was too busy focusing on my own riders racing. So Antonelli wins the first race of the season, then ahead of Messia in second and Fanati in third. Manuel Hernandez getting 12th place then in that race. Fantastic result. And Daisy Jackson, unfortunately, struggling on that last lap. It looked like it was going to be a 12-13 for a little bit, but then she really got beat up on the last lap and dropped down into 16th place. But a good result for her. We've half met the race goal then, not quite fully met it, unfortunately. But now it's time for my race. Can we try and get a victory here in Qatar? Oh yes, of course, it's the championship standings first to look at. I completely went over that. Obviously, the race result's going to be the same as the first round's championship. If we have a look at the team's championship then, we're currently sat in 8th place. Four points, obviously only one rider scoring in that race. But we're not too far behind Red Bull KTM IO, of course, obviously with only Toba scoring in that race for them. So that we could be in a bit of a battle with the uh, Petrona Sprinter Racing and the Red Bull KTM IO later on in this season, especially if our riders could try and improve a little bit, but not a bad result actually in the first race. So here we are then on the grid for the Qatar GP here in MotoGP. And I completely forgot about the messed up grid after that Moto3 race. I got so engrossed in it with how my riders were doing and it was actually a really fun race to watch and commentate on. But it is a pretty messed up grid. So Quattararo done in ninth place. I think Marquez in around 8th or something like that. So really our two biggest threats are those guys. Vinales is extremely quick this season so far. Uh, Polis Bagra has been very, very fast as well. Well, I say that as if we've done multiple races. But <laughs> meaning qualifying, they've been quite fast. And I expect Vinales to be very fast this season. I didn't quite expect it from Alasius, not Alasius, Polis Bagro. Didn't quite expect it from Polis Bagro to be that fast on the Honda right away but second position he could be our opposition for this race definitely for the race win so let's get this race started then and I'll hopefully try and get a victory for our first race on the Suzuki the Qatar Motorcycle Grand Prix will start shortly here in Doha and the riders are ready to compete on an amazing illuminated racetrack so obviously Miller on the second row as well so we have got to watch out for Jack Miller there trying to get a good start get past us down to Trusher Control 2 up to Palmo 2 wait for the lights to go out here at Qatar Lights out and away we go. That's actually not been too bad of a start there. But Polis Bagro has minced us off the line already. We've done a bit of a wheelie. Yeah, there goes Jack Miller. I did say watch out for him. I thought he'd be through. We're trying to go around the outside of him into the first quarter. We've not quite been able to do that. So we've dropped down into third place. But Polis Bagro leads the MotoGP race. I don't know if that's for the first time. I think he might have led once before. I'm not too sure. Maverick Vinales has got him very, very hot though. Our teammate Alex Rins has gone past us. Like we said, it's still Mark Marquez already right behind us. I need to try and get my head down and get this race started because my tyre is really struggling. Quattararo has dropped even further down the order, so Quattararo's had an awful start, but Mark Marquez has had a good one, but his teammates had an even better one, taking the lead of the race. Marquez almost hitting us on the back there through turn five, so to hit the brakes then for turn six. Our teammate is up next, so I do want to try and pass him. Oh, Mark Marquez is down! And I think he took out Jean Mir with him. So Marquez crashing at the end of last season twice in a row and he continues that streak into this season a crash at the first race he's cracked under the pressure so now not being the reigning champion anymore and having his championship rival from last season ahead of him he's made a big mistake we're looking for the inside of Rins but we can't quite go for it there but also we have got eight laps so we've got plenty plenty of time to try and make some moves in this race but yeah, Mark Marquez down again. That is not the start to this season he wanted to have, especially after the end of his season last time. He's crashed three races in a row now. Absolutely ridiculous. And if you think about his record before that, he'd only crashed in Assen, and that wasn't even his fault. So coming up towards the line, and at the end of this first lap, Polis Bagra leads out of Jack Miller in second, Alex Rins third, myself in fourth, Rossi in fifth place. But what has happened to Quattararo? He's absolutely dropped down. Brad Binder's up to seventh place. So Brad Binder's had a great start. But you can see Quattararo is just dropping. Whether he's picked up some damage on this opening lap, I don't know. But he is really dropping backwards. Here we go then. We've got another good run on Rins. We're looking at the inside of this right-hander. 
into turn seven. Oh, he sat up a little bit there, but we've got the move on our teammate done now. So we actually might be battling with our teammate a little bit more this season. Obviously, last season we didn't really go near our teammates at all because we we're outperforming the bike by so much. So up into third place, then Jack Miller on the factory Ducati up next, and then it's Paula Spagro who's actually pulling out a bit of a lead. So at the end of this second lap, then 53-1 for Spagro. In fact, I've just done an identical time to. Polis Bagro, so we're lapping at the pace of the leader. It's given me the fastest lap anyway, but I thought we did the same time to the thousandth. So whether I went quicker, you know, to an even lesser decimal place. But Alex Marquez is really coming through the pack. I don't know what's happening here, but Alex Marquez, fantastic pace so far coming through the pack. So into the last corner then at the end of the third lap. We're closing right up to Jack Miller now. We've not quite got the exit actually though. Obviously, that was our strength last season was the exit off that last corner, but we've not quite had a great exit off that one. 53-0, so a new fastest lap of the race once again, so we are getting into our stride now. We're all over the back of Jack Miller now. I need to try and get past him because we're almost halfway through the race, and Polis Bagro is quite far in front. Miller took that corner quite well, actually. I thought he was going to run wide, but he didn't quite. He kept it on the kerb and carried a good flow through there. So there we go then at the end of the fourth lap. Yeah, Spagaro's gone quicker on that lap. A new fastest lap of the race to Paula Spagaro. Here we go, close up on Jack Miller. I'm just going to go for the dive into the first corner. I'm not going to get that one stopped, though. But I had to give it a go. We actually might have closed up to him because of that, though, still. So it was probably still worth going for. Through turn two, then. Got a good run through three. Are we going to have an attack into four or five? Potentially. On the brakes into turn four, then we're right behind Jack Miller now. But Polis Bagger is checking out at this point of the race. So there we go then, down towards turn six. We're going for the inside on Miller again. Oh, we've actually hit Miller out of the way a little bit there. I'm going to let him keep the position because that was overly aggressive from myself. So that's probably cost us a chance at getting something decent. It looks like Quattararo is finally making his way back through the order there. So through the final turn then at the end of the fifth lap. We've got quite a good run compared to Miller now. Can we have a look at the dive bomb into the first corner of this lap? I think we might be able to actually do it properly this time. Although we are still quite far behind. We are definitely lacking the straight line speed a little bit. That is affecting us here. But Polis Bagra, I think he's out of reach now. So it is just a fight for second with Jack Miller. All these are to six once again on Miller. This time though we've not hit him but we've got it hot anyway. We're going to run it around the outside. There we go. We finally got past Jack Miller. We've done a bit of a wheelie. Miller slowed down massively there because I think we almost had contact on the exit of the corner then. So we are finally up to second place, but we've got a, two, two and a half laps to go. 1.6 seconds to pull. I don't think we can pull that back. I'd be very surprised if we can because we've got to save some fuel as well. So what's the gap with two to go then? The gap's 1.3 seconds. Four tenths of a second behind at this intermediate. We actually are on here. We've caught up enough where... This is a final lap battle between me and Polis Bagro for the victory here in Qatar. Unless I can pass him before the final lap, of course, but I don't think I'm quite that fast. Through the penultimate turn then, sliding that rear end, going onto the green a little bit, down towards the last corner. Polis Bagro breaking quite early. I couldn't quite go for the move because that was a little bit weird. Caught me off guard the way he braked, but through the last corner then, he's not carried the run perfectly. So here we go then, we're all over the back of Polis Bagro. We've taken 1.3 out of him in a lap. In the slipstream then, he's really struggling at this point of the race, isn't he? Over the line, 53-2. That's not even a particularly quick lap. But past him we go, up into the lead of the Qatar GP. We've got to try and put a bit of time into him now. If you look at the fuel, we've got 1.1 laps of fuel. So we are quite marginal on the fuel. But I want to try and get away from Paul a little bit. So they can't attack us back right at the end of the lap. Into the last corner then. For the first time this season. It's going to be another win here for us then. We open our account with Suzuki with a pole position and a win. Polis Spagro struggling with tyres at the end. He pushed too hard early on to build out a gap but it didn't quite work. So then in the end we won by 1.5 seconds. We put a massive amount of time into him right on the last lap really. Or well, we came from about nearly 2 seconds behind. Probably 1.8 something like that. Initially we brought the gap down. We brought it down to about 1.3 starting the penultimate lap and we caught it all up managed to make the move at the start of the final lap and put another one and a half seconds into him so jack miller then rounding off the podium in third place so two new factory well, actually three new factory newcomers obviously i wasn't in the factory team last time making up the podium my teammate rins in fourth place then davizioso 
fifth place. Only eight tenths away from Miller. But Miller outshining him then in the first race as teammates. Davizioso didn't qualify that well, I don't think. So he didn't do a bad job. Alex Marquez, he did a pretty good job this weekend. He didn't do a bad job at all with sixth place. So Valentino Rossi actually top Yamaha, would you believe? On the Petronas Yamaha in seventh place. Brad Binder, after not managing to get out of Q1, manages to get an eighth place ahead of his teammate Oliveira in ninth. So KTM have definitely made a definite step forward in this season. Obviously, they really struggled last year, the factory team, but they're not doing a bad job now. More Bedelli, the other Petronas Yamaha. So both Petronas bikes beating the factory team. It does seem a little bit weird here. Uh, seventh and tenth places then. So more Bedelli in tenth place. Eleventh for Bang Nye, Twelfth for about thirteenth for Maverick Vinales. His fastest lap apparently was a 52-3, but I really don't think that's the case at all. Quattararo 14th, so the two factory Yamahas, I have no idea what happened to them in this race. Quattararo qualified appallingly, dropped backwards. Vinales just almost ran us up the back, and that's probably where he lost all of his places. Martin getting the last point then in his first race in MotoGP. Ike Laquona, Joan Zarco, Daniela Petrucci, Takaki Nakagami, Joan Mir obviously after his crash, Kyle Crutchlow, and Alicia Swagger are not getting points. Alicia Swagger apparently did a 51-5. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. And Mark Marquez not scoring anything, obviously, after crashing out. We will have to have a look at that. Obviously, he crashed with Jean Mir. So Mir not doing a bad job then to still get 20th, beating the two Aprilias. But the Aprilias definitely seeming like they're struggling in this season. Well, they struggled last season, but it doesn't look like they've improved at all this season. So that is a shame. It's not nice to see. Obviously, the Riders' Championship is exactly the same as the race results that we've just looked at. In the Team's Championship, then, it's led by us, Suzuki, 38 points, ahead of mission winner Ducati in second with 27 points. Third for Repsol Honda team with 20 points. And then Petronas Yamaha in fourth place, not doing a bad job. The Factory Yamaha team all the way down in eighth in the Championship. Obviously, a few teams not scoring as well. The Tech 3 team, the LCR Honda Idemitsu team, and the Aprilia Racing Team Grassini team. I don't know why I said team twice, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. And obviously, with that victory then, we are leading the Constructors' Championship as Suzuki, five points ahead of Honda, and obviously then Ducati, obviously being on the third step of the podium. So three different manufacturers on all places on the podium there with 16 points. Yamaha got a top score of ninth, KTM with eight, and Aprilia still with zero. So we'll go and have a look then, see what happened with Vinales, what he did round, running wide. I'll see if I can see what happened to Quattararo in the race as well. And obviously we'll look at Marquez's crash as well. So then this is on board with Fabio off the start. What happened to him then? So he started alongside Marquez. Marquez was up behind us pretty quickly. So Quattararo, not a terrible start initially, I suppose. He's lost a bit of ground as we go down towards the first corner. He's gone a little bit timidly. He's got two KTMs around the outside. Rossi actually went in quite wide. So, an, oh, yeah, I think he might have picked up damage there. He just had a little bit of contact. And, yet yeah, that was enough. That's knocked his wing off, look, on this side, the left-hand side. So that would explain Quattararo's lack of performance on this first lap. Obviously, you can see Mir and Vinales both running in a little bit wide there. But, yeah, Quattararo just dropped back after that damage. So this is on board with Vinales then. Into this corner there. He closes right up to me, sits up massively. He just avoids me, so I don't think he picked up any damage from me or anything like that, but he lost quite a bit of time. He's running it up the inside of me. Gets a bit clipped by Davizioso. So Davizioso did a good job to come through from that far behind. Then Mignolas just seems to drop further and further through the order here. Did he pick up any damage? Oh, he's had a bit of contact with Oliveira. I don't know if that would have picked up any damage for him. But here he goes towards turn six. Is he going to do anything silly here? You can see the crash with Marquez in a second. Yeah, he's had Mir off completely. But I'm not sure if what's happened to Vinales. He just seemed to get a bit beat up on this first lap. Has he got any damage? Let's have a look. Uh, it doesn't look like it. So I think after he ran wide, he just got a bit flustered, really. And I think once you've lost the positions on the first lap, it's very hard to make them back up unless you're Marquez. So speaking of Marquez, we're on board with him then. So we're going into turn six. He just seems to sit up for no reason, just going to the side of Mir. So poor old Mir, completely innocent party. If we watch this slow down then, He's coming into the corner. He's absolutely nowhere near me, really. He's still nowhere near me, but he starts to sit up at this point. Just sits up for no reason because he thinks he's going to hit me, but he's actually nowhere near me. And then just goes straight into the path of Jean Mir and has them both down. So just, just a bit of a weird incident there for Marquez. So on board with Mir then. He's on the outside of Marquez. Marquez just sits up, clatters into him, has them both down. Obviously Mir then remounts, but just seems a bit of a clumsy move from Mark, to be honest. I don't know why he did that. So then, on the reputation front, we gain 19,700. That's a lot more than we used to gain with Tech 3 KTM, which takes us up to 501,700 reputation points. 
And on the credits then, we actually get paid for our Moto3 riders as well. So I got 31,574 for my race performance. But with Hernandez getting into the top 12, obviously Jackson not quite been able to do that, unfortunately. We get paid an extra 40,000 on top of that, which takes us up to 72,040. Adding that takes us to 1,892,243 credits. And then for our biker racing team, we lost 90 prestige then by not getting Jackson into the top 16. But we gained 105 for getting Hernandez there. And for the qualifying as well, he got us 39. So overall, we gained 54. And on the development front, we gain 125 research data because they did one of the practice programs. So I think that's where we'll end off this episode there then. It's probably been a bit of a long one with the Moto3 race in it as well. That's probably how they'll all be this season, just a bit longer because of the Moto3 race. And once I start Moto2 junior team, it'll be incredibly long. I might have to split it up into a couple of videos. So have my race and qualifying in one and then the Moto2 and 3 qualifying well, race in another one. But I hope you did enjoy that video then, guys. I've not really got much to add. Just a bit of a mixed-up weekend. Some of the riders I expected to be fighting for the championship just not being there. But Espagro and Miller still put up a pretty good fight. Only just being able to beat Espagro. I thought I wasn't going to beat him, to be honest. With a few, with a three laps to go, I thought that was it. That was it done. But we managed to catch that gap up. He really struggled at the end. He almost got caught by Miller. But he just hung on to second place. So a really good debut for the Honda team there. And Mark Marquez... You bet he'll be back fighting next week. Same with the two Yamahas as well. Because they had extremely poor weekends in Qatar. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that video then guys. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next one.